Hey there, folks. Welcome to the edition of Stranger in a Southern Land. I, of course, am your host, Jake Manning. Today on the program, I speak with Andrew from Doc Porter Distillery. It's always a pleasure to sit down and talk with somebody who started their own business, especially a business based in alcohol. Uh, even though I don't drink too much, I still love the taste of it. But I definitely did love this conversation that I had with Andrew. We talked about all the sexy stuff, the legal permits, the zoning regulations, and all the things that come along with starting your own distillery. Like I said, the sexy stuff, the thing that I like to talk about, you know. I, I'm intrigued in all this paperwork that you have to go through, all these hoops you have to go through, and how regulation is so different state by state, especially North Carolina and its weird history of bootlegging and regulating alcohol. It's its interesting and fascinating to me, but probably the thing that's going to be interesting and fascinating to you guys in this podcast is how Andrew's able to juggle his life. He's got a lot of things up in the air. He's spinning a lot of plates. You know, he's got his wife, he's got his kids, he's got another career, and now he's got the small business that he's trying to balance and grow at the same time. His product line is going to be very large in the future, you know, and I can't wait to see the future of Doc Porter Distilleries when it comes to craft spirits. He's got a bourbon line coming up. He's already got gin and vodka out right now. So, very excited to see what the future holds for Doc Porter here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I think it's going to be a bright one. But speaking of bright futures, I uh, have a very bright future because of Shining Wizards Podcast Network. They've made this cool kid's table a little bit larger, getting this podcast out to as many ears and eyeballs as there are in the world listening to podcasts. So I can't thank them enough. And make sure that you go check them out at Shining Wizards Network. Dot com. Also, too, Don's doing good work over there at his website, and he's also producing another podcast of mine, How Did This Get Booked, that I get a co-host with Zane Riley. So make sure you check out all his podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, and most specifically, DSCT.TV. Um, only got a couple of dates to give you right now. It's kind of whittling down, and you're going to find out why when I give you the last date. But most specifically, I want to let you know that I'm making my Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment debut on Sunday, July 17th. I'm very excited about that show. For more information about who I'm wrestling and tickets for that show, make sure you log on to AtlantaWrestlingEntertainment.com. And the big one, Sunday, July 24th, PWX title versus career john's title the pwx title that is against my career so i might not have any more wrestling dates to plug after this one so i highly encourage you to come out to escapade at charlotte north carolina sunday july 24th because that might be my last match or my greatest match that's kind of the quandary i'm in right now but anyways, for more information about that show and other shows coming up, make sure you follow me on social media. And that is very easy to do. I am very available on it. I am available on Twitter at Manscout Manning or on Instagram at Manscout Manning. For any questions about the podcast or for if you want to become a sponsor of this podcast, make sure you email me at jake at sslshow.com. Or if you want to book me for an upcoming wrestling event, make sure you email me at manscoutmanning at yahoo.com. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into this wonderful conversation with Andrew from Doc Porter Distillery, based out of here in Charlotte, North Carolina. But they're here on the Stranger in a Southern Land podcast right now. Yeah, but sh I should I should be getting up a lot earlier. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to work on a schedule where I only need six hours of sleep. Oh man! But I work out so much that my muscles need time to relax. Yeah. So like, like what, what's your schedule? Do you get up early? Uh, I have to. <laughs> I, I know. Kids. I look at this this setup. You have to, and then you, yeah. you said you had kids uh, too. Yeah, two two kids, so I haven't slept past like seven for two years <laughs> <laughs> well i mean at least that's a nice alarm clock for me yeah. there's, there's got to be a little bit more constitution in myself mm -hmm. you you just you know, you've got somebody you have a physical human being waking yeah. you up <laughs> my girlfriend's probably the complete opposite if anybody's waking her up it's me just because i want to kiss her and see her uh, because exactly. i'm usually asleep when she gets home because she works at a bar oh man and then i like i said want to get up early and get going and get the day started yeah. but uh yeah, it's just rough. Yeah. But uh, anyways, it, you know, Andrew, thank you very much for letting me yeah. come into no, your no. business establishment. Um, it's quite impressive. I mean, like, like you look outside, and it's just a very 
inconspicuous little office, and then oh, you yeah. come through here, and you, know, you can see the video portion just all the way back. In the yeah, distillery. We're, we're pretty small, so we don't we don't have too much of a. Well, you're just as big as any entrance. other distillery that I've, I've I've talked to. You know what I'm saying? At least yeah. especially your floor area and stuff like that. Well, yeah, we got about 2,400 square feet of production, 600 up front for tasting room and office. Yeah. So. It's been a good size for us to start out, at least. Yeah, like this, like when something's like, "Oh, this would make perfect." When I see this whole thing, I'm like, "Yeah, this makes perfect sense. This is where you would start. This mm-hmm. is this is great. You know, this yeah. is you know just everything you need right now." Yeah. But you know, normally, you know, when I, I, I talk to distillers and brewers and stuff like that, they, you know, I always want to hear the story of how this came to be. But it seems like there's a more interesting story that I like to start with about mm-hmm. your grandfather. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm I'm big on grandfathers. I had a great grandfather mm-hmm. too, but uh, he did not inspire me to become a veterinarian <laughs> in a small town community. Yeah. But your grandfather inspired you to do something else. So please tell right. the story of your grandfather. I'm interested about it because I only saw little blurbs about it, and you know. Yeah, so he he was actually kind of my scientific inspiration. So. Uh, he was actually a, a medical doctor, so that's where the name comes from, Doc Porter. Everyone mm-hmm. called him that growing up. Mm-hmm. Um, so after he was a, they were just like, "Hey, Doc." It was always it was Doc. Yeah, because that's what it was. With my grandfather he was a vet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's one of the small town communities. It was the vet, and then the actual doctor. Doctor, <laughs> there was two doctors in town. Yeah, the main doctor and the backup doctor. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, well, well, when the zombie apocalypse comes uh, around, he's now our doctor. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but but then after, so he was a doctor, and then my dad, he he's an engineer, and then I have a brother who's a scientist as well. So oh, geez, we're man. we're a lot of uh, scientists, scientists and engineering. In the, in Did the you family. follow in those footsteps? Or yeah, I'm I'm an engineer as well. Okay, so, I was gonna yeah, say, I, I was like, I, I was like, I, I feel bad for you if you were the black sheep of the family <laughs> and you had like a bachelor bachelor of arts or something no, like that. <laughs> no, I, I got I got a degree in chemical engineering, so that's what I that's what I do oh. during the day when I'm not here. So I still have I still have that job thirty hours a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had to reduce hours because this was taking up so much of my time. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully someday this will become full time, but right now I still need to pay the bills. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely understand. But yeah. uh, let's go back to your grandfather, Doc, mm-hmm. Doc Porter. How, what, what's the story behind him? What's the connection of alcohol? Like how's this, how's this all come around? Well, he he actually didn't he didn't do any distilling himself. It's uh-huh. just kind of. Uh, when my wife and I were trying to think of names, we, we had like a million names and, and it's always, when you're naming a business, it's always kind of very personal. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the names were thrown around. Finally, Liz kept saying, well, kind of what's your inspiration? And then we started thinking of different names and they were always like, oh, that one's junk. But then I was like, oh yeah, everyone called my, my grandfather, Doc Porter. Like, could that be a good like segue into something? So then we tried to bounce off of that and then we en- ended up just landing on Doc Porter. So it's, it's kinda, a good name. Yeah, kind of so, happy about that. It rings. It yeah. rings true, you know. <laughs> yeah. But and people call me Doc sometimes, too. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, this, how does that make you feel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's pretty pretty cool that, that every time they, they call me Doc, I kind of get to think of my grandfather. And, and, and he passed away uh, tw- 2011, so he didn't get to, to see what this became. Um, but I think he'd be proud if he saw it. Yeah. Well, well like, what was the uh, – other than just, like, science and, and just, you know – chemical engineer what was the things about your grandfather that like really inspired you to do this business you know what i'm saying like yeah well he was he was also kind of a like i love animals but like i don't have any you know what i'm saying like i don't treat them or, or mend them like like I, it just like I, it's unique that this your grandfather inspired you or kind of was the impetus for creating this well yeah and it kind of stems through my grandfather and through my through my dad as well so what got me into kind of distilling is i grew up homebrewing with my dad because he was kind of the always big into making beer, drinking beer. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ever since I was a young kid, he was making beer in our kitchen. Uh, So then he kind of went into old grain brewing and then I kind of started with him. So I learned a lot from him. And then when I went to college, I kind of got more into making beer and eventually into making spirits. So that's kind of where I ended up uh, here. Um, And I was actually amazed when I moved to, to Charlotte, there was only one brewery when I moved here. And I thought that was ridiculous because everybody loves beer and especially good beer. And what year was that? That was uh, 2009, I believe. Okay. So I think maybe there was a couple, but I remember like either six months or a year later, it was like Birdsong, Noda, Triple C, yeah. all, all of it up at the same time. So it all I, ramped up I, at, a, at a certain amount of time. Yeah, yeah. I've been here since 2005. Yeah. And yeah, I don't like it's been ridiculous the last three to four years. Of just mm-hmm. They just pop up out of nowhere. Yeah. And, and especially seeing the success of the craft breweries, it kind of 
said, oh, well, maybe craft spirits would be something that Charlotte would really enjoy. So it, it definitely helped open up a window for us because without craft beer kind of leading the way, we kind of wouldn't have anything to follow with. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, that was the thing too, like that intrigued me about you. And I, I, I popped it. I read some article about you guys opening up. I'm like, oh, this is great because we don't have a lot of distilleries in town, mm -hmm. you know, because they always seem to be like out in the middle of nowhere. Like there's nothing in town right. here to, to like, like, but there's a ton of like craft breweries. I'm like, it's like if they put in one more brewery, I swear. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, it just gets a point of like, when's the bubble going to pop? Like seriously guys. And then they, they still keep opening them up. I'm like, why do you keep opening them up? <laughs> like eventually this bubble is going to pop and yeah. not everybody's going to survive this. It seems like distillery was the, the smarter option to go yeah yeah and and i mean being a distillery it's kind of difficult for us too because we can, we don't have the options of, of serving or having a tasting room or tap or we can have a tasting room but we can't have a tap room where people can come and hang out and drink uh so that was like the, the good thing that the breweries have going for them is that they're pretty much a, a bar going on almost five seven days a week where we're mostly relying just on on giving tours and, and word of mouth, trying to get in the bars and restaurants. So, uh, yeah, yeah, that's what's in, in, intriguing about the way it's set up in North Carolina. This is just basically a advertisement for to right. get people to go to a store. <laughs> yeah, like really, this is an advertisement front. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and they and they did pass the law last October, which was really helpful to us for to selling one bottle per person per year. So at least now, when we give a tour, we're able to let them leave with a bottle in their hand, so they can get kind of start to adapt that 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 product instead of instead of saying, oh, I went to, uh, I went to a distillery a, a month or two months ago, and now I'm at an ABC store. What was the name of that distillery? And then they have to try and remember. And yeah. so it, it, it definitely helps for us being able to, to let them leave with, with one bottle. At yeah. least they have one bottle. They've seen it. It's sat on their counter at their mm -hmm. house. So then there's a likelihood if they want a second bottle to go to an ABC store, I'm like, okay, I do remember what this bottle looks like. Yeah, exactly. As opposed to trying to pull out that name mm -hmm. in alphabet soup of whatever. Yeah. So like... So that's always good because I, I think the last time I, I interviewed a distillery that hadn't been passed yet. Mm, so yeah. I wanted to know if is that like increased your business? Or oh yeah, that... I mean it's so we opened in November and the law passed in October. So okay, it's something so you that... you've only known it to be this way, right? So. And it's been so helpful for us. I, I mean, I wouldn't. It must have been really hard for distilleries before this law was passed because we, we, we'd make a lot of our, our money through the, the distillery tours and the bottle sales at the distillery because um, having to rely on just ABC uh, sales is a lot more difficult and, and they also take a larger percentage of tax from a bottle sold in ABC than mm -hmm. from a bottle sold here. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's definitely been, been really good for us. Yeah. And also too, like there is that sense of like, you're putting in an ABC store. You just have to ship it to one location. Mm -hmm. You have to ship it to every individual store. Right. Know? Yeah. So that's the way it's set up now is we just send a, a giant pallet to the ABC warehouse and then they distribute it from, from there. So when we're paying, uh, a high, I say we pay higher tax in the ABC store, it's really paying them to be our distributor. So it all comes down to, to kind of the ABC system and how they're set up, which is, it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a very streamlined system. So once you get incorporated into it, it's, it's pretty much, it's a machine that runs itself, but it's, it's the getting a new product in there. It's always kind of a, a difficult thing. It usually takes about six months to get it out into the store so people can get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and also too, those stores, a lot of times they don't really feature, not that they don't feature, but like you'd think that like they'd want to support local so much, like there'd be a mm -hmm. nice big, like here's all the local ones. Most of the time it's like <laughs> in a corner off to the side, yeah. like here's our locals <laughs> over here. Like I dare you to put up a sign. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. Some stores are awesome and they yeah, have, so it's, they it's have all huge store by signs, store. but, so. but every store is required to have an, uh, made in North Carolina section yes uh, but there's no requirement of what that has to be or where it has to be or mm -hmm. what they have to put in it um so it's kind of interesting that it's it's all run by the state but then it's kind of run a little bit at the, at, at the store level as well um so that's that's been an interesting thing uh trying to navigate through start starting up for sure yeah it's an interesting system that that has its pros and cons but it's mm -hmm. also like rooted in like long line of bootlegging and right. preventing that. But and then also too, it's like, 
like my girlfriend uh, lived in Kentucky for a while, and obviously that was bourbon country. So mm-hmm. like you could get like a bottle of bourbon at the gas station, like, <laughs> and it's oh, it, yeah. it flows it throws me for a loop, especially because I grew up in Iowa. Mm-hmm. Like how prevalent alcohol was around all the time, and then it's like now here it's so restricted that it's right. it, it's weird. But also too, I've been living here so long that now it throws me when I see just alcohol. I'm like you could buy yeah. this at like a roadside stand, and, <laughs> and you feel like you're doing something illegal. You're like, am I buying this? Is this is this okay? Yeah, like if you, yeah, that's one of those things. You're like, I don't know if I'm so, like, I don't know how are you able to do this? Like, oh yeah, it's it's wild, and every state has different laws, and that's kind of the, one of the interesting things about being a distillery is that if we want to get into another state, we have to figure out that state's laws and and and, and follow them pretty much. So uh, that is, right now we're just in North Carolina, but as we look to expand, I mean, South Carolina would, is the obvious next contender because we're right there, uh, but we're still probably a a while of a while away from that yeah because you gotta fill out a bunch of paperwork and everything like that has that mm-hmm. gone fairly well for you uh like it was how much of a headache was that for you the just all the everything the permit yeah, yeah exactly like for somebody who's you yeah. know gone through like I chemical mean, engineering and everything like that and all kinds of homework and paperwork how is this compared to that I, it, it's similar i mean it's and when you're dealing with uh the government and state-run things i mean it's always kind of like, oh, this could run smoother, but then you're like, but nobody has any incentive to make this run smoother, so you just kind of have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it wasn't too bad, um, kind of filling all the paperwork. Just you just gotta do one step at a time and just go through it, and then an issue would come up, and you just have to tackle it, and you just have to make sure you plan for it in your business plan that says, oh, if the average wait time is 120 days to get your permit. I'm, I can't assume I'm going to get it in less than that, and I'm probably have to make sure that I'm okay to get it in more than that. So when it ended up taking us 150 days to get our federal permit, I mean, we were prepared for it. It wasn't like, oh, now we have to shut down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, so once you get your federal permit, uh, then getting the state permits, uh, not too bad there, because they mostly just make sure you have your your federal permit, and then they have a few other things that they want to check on before you can start operating as a distillery in the state. Yeah, because like the federal one is the, is the toughest one to get. Mm-hmm. But isn't there something like funky that you have to have an operating still? Yeah, but it's 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 you have to have a, a lease on a building because they want to make sure that where you're putting your distillery is is compliant with what with their rules. Mm-hmm. So you always have to have your lease on your building, and then you either need to have your equipment in place or you need to have. Uh, fabrication drawings of oh I have this equipment on order and you show hey I've already purchased this and it's on its way and this is what it's gonna look like um, so that's what we we ended up doing so we had it arrive while we were waiting on our permit and got it all uh, installed okay, a little slick. yeah but but it's it's always kind of like well what if the permit doesn't get approved and then I just built a distillery in this place and then they say oh hey you got to move because of some weird mm-hmm. exception so you're always kind of have a little bit of risk uh, definitely in setting up a, a, a distillery. Yeah. And I always thought, I think there was like something fun. I, there might, you might have to correct me on this. I think there's something funky. Like you have to have an operating still for your state license, but like you don't have your state license to have an operating still yet. Like yeah. you almost have to have one built, but you're not legally allowed to have one built. Yeah. There's a lot of chicken or the egg things where they just kind yeah. of like they're you, you're like, well, I can't do this cause I'm breaking a law. And then they're like, Oh, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to do that to get the permit. You have yeah. to be do something illegal to, yeah. have to get the permit. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's just it's such a weird backwards system. Yeah, we had something crazy like that happen that took us three weeks to get over, uh, and that was getting our steam boiler approved. Where to operate the steam boiler, uh, we needed gas turned on. Mm-hmm. And they wouldn't turn on our gas until we got our mechanical permit approved by the the city. But they, the, the city wouldn't approve your mechanical permit until they saw that steam boiler run. And I'm like, well, I can't run it without gas. So how am I going to get it approved? Because they won't turn on the gas until you approve it. Uh, so then what I, I, I found, this, I finally talked to the one person at, at, in Mecklenburg County that knew about this loophole. And he said, all right, this is what you do. You have to apply. That's always scary when a government official, like, okay, here's what you got yeah, here, here's, here's you know the, it's not going to be yeah. technically legal what you're doing. Well, well it, it, <laughs> it kind of is, but it's just this weird loophole that it's the only way that he, you can pretty much do it. it was, so it was August, and it was like 100 degrees out. He's like, what you have to do, you have to apply for a temporary heat permit so that they'll give you heat during your construction. 
uh, so that way they, they turn on your gas for, for like a month. So uh-huh. that because you're, you don't want your workers freezing to death in, yeah. in August, obviously. Um, so, <laughs> so I applied for a temporary heat permit. They turned on my gas. I was able to get the boiler passed. And then I was able to go back to, to uh, Piedmont Natural Gas and, and say, hey, I passed my boiler inspection. Can you like fully turn on my gas now? And they're like, okay. So I was like, that, I, I don't know how you would have figured out that you have to apply for a temporary heat permit in, yeah. in the middle of August. But That guy and this podcast are the only two resources <laughs> on that piece of information yeah. ever. Exactly. And, and, it, and it probably, half the time, it probably isn't an issue because sometimes people are cool with it and, they're, and maybe Piedmont would be like, oh yeah, we'll turn on your gas. But for us, they just wouldn't do it. You should get the wrong guy. You should get the wrong guy on the line. Oh, yeah. And and he was a, he was a great guy, but he was just he was just following the rules. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was above his pay grade. Yeah. What's he going to do? Yeah, but we ran into a couple of interesting things like that. Yeah, well, what else? Like, so most people might be bored by this, but I find this <laughs> like like I work at a small business, and these small little details like these this is the sexy stuff. For yeah, me. you know yeah. what I'm saying? How do we get from point A to point B? And, yeah, I know, not a straight line, that's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> but like you know, any other obstacles that we had to had to go through, oh, like. Man. Uh, I mean, everything was just kind of slow going. I mean, uh, the, the steam boiler was the main thing that took, I mean, I planned for it to take about four weeks and it ended up taking almost 12 weeks. Oh. Um, and it was just, and you're, and you're just like paying rent on this building yeah, just and paying you're, rent. It, it I'm just, not making any money on anything. Were no, there any? Exactly. And then, <laughs> yeah, so that took a lot longer than expected. So we weren't able to start producing in, 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 uh, as soon as we'd like to, um, but yeah, I mean, it's just other little things. That was the main thing that actually took up a lot of time. Anything else, it was just like small and I could figure it out in a couple of days. But that one was just like pulling your hair out. Like, come on. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, here you are, you're paying rent for all this stuff and, and all this money is just flying out and you're doing this on the hope that it's going to be successful. Mm-hmm. What's your thought process as a person that's keeping you going? Like what type of positive mindset, what type of... Like what kept you going? Yeah, well, what kept you from going? Just cut your losses. Yeah, I guess uh, so. It's my wife and I that 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 we're the the owners of the business, and she. So I'm a chemical engineer, so I do all the production and mm-hmm. make I make everything run on that side of the wall, and then she does sales and marketing, so she yeah. makes sure that everything looks good and that we're uh, kind of communicating our message correctly. Uh, so that kind of helps that we're kind of two separate uh, parts of it. Um, yeah, you're not on top of each other. Not, not like you're a marketing guy and she's a marketing guy. It's not like she's a chemical person and she's like, oh, no, you're mixing that wrong. You yeah, know? you're very separate. Mm-hmm. You work here, but you're separate. I lost my train of thought. What, what was the original question? Uh, I think I even lost my. <laughs> <laughs> I was going somewhere. And yeah, then and I, I went and to I, somewhere else. And then I derailed you. I derailed you. It was about uh, as far as uh, what kept you going. Your mindset. Oh yeah, what kept us going? Okay, yeah. So so. Uh, so she, I'm definitely the, the more optimistic one where I'm always just like, oh, it's just a hurdle. We just got to get over it. And she's always kind of kind of worried about things. So, so I'm always I'm always out I there. Get saying, that. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always out there saying, oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Like, we just have to do this and it'll be fine. Oh, maybe we just have to change that and go a different direction. And she's always like, no, we, we, we have to do this and, 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 and just worrying about it. Like, what if that this happens? Why? And stuff like that. So it's kind of good that we balance each other out that I'm kind of optimistic and then she'll have to reel me back in and be like well that that's not realistic and then and then I'll have to keep her spirits up to, to say oh it's not that bad we can just do something else or or something like that so there are definitely a couple places where we had to get creative and and kind of pivot towards a different direction mm-hmm. um but no, nothing like major that ha- we had to like completely change the product we were making. There wasn't that, like that night of drinking just like, like straight bourbon. Like, I don't know if I've made the dumbest mistake <laughs> of my entire life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, it's just, uh, and one of the things is it's, it's right now we, we have a lot of money going out because we we're producing vodka and we're producing gin, uh, and they're selling great, but we're also spending half the time producing bourbon that we're putting in barrels. So we're constantly paying money to produce barrels, buy barrels, and just put it away uh, while it ages. So that's kind of the, the 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 thing I need to keep her going is, well, eventually we're going to release the bourbon and money is going to start coming in because right mm-hmm. now there's a lot of money going out. Uh, and that's kind of the interesting thing about, and the hardest thing for starting a, cra- a craft distillery who mainly wants to focus on whiskeys is, is you spend a lot of money to make the whiskey, but you can't really sell it until it's ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's kind of the point where we're at now 
And, and we're lucky that we, we, we use slightly smaller barrels so the aging process goes a little bit faster. So we use 15 and 25 gallon barrels instead of the standard 53 gallon barrels. So uh, our, our 15 gallon barrels, which we were, were you trying to use mostly, uh, about three years and 53 gallons, about a year and a, a 15 gallon. Some people age as little as six months. Mm -hmm. um, so that allows us, to, uh, hopefully we'll get our bourbon out by this November, uh, which will which will be just in time for holidays. Um, so we're, we're pretty excited about, about that for sure. Well, I'm excited about it too. Yeah. Bourbon's my drink so like, and my <laughs> yeah. girlfriend as well. So you're oh, at least yeah. getting $20 from us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's good. So there's one sale for sure. <laughs> now everything else that's on your, on your own, but right. you're at least getting one sale from us for yep. sure. But uh, yeah, you've got you, gin and vodka. You're the ones you first roll out, but now mm -hmm. you're expanding the permits. Why, why, why expand your product? Like, you know, why expand your product? Like, you could just stick with gin and vodka. I mean, I, I love all different kinds of spirits, so I kind of want to take a kind of a creative spin on each traditional product, mm -hmm. and then maybe start making some non-traditional products as we kind of people get more uh, educated on how distilled spirits are made. Uh, we don't exactly want to make. Uh, something crazy that nobody's ever heard of and then they wouldn't know what to do with yeah. um, So right now we're just trying to introduce them with uh, vodka and gin So our vodka is hundred percent North Carolina wheat. So we use a farmer that's only 30 miles from here uh, And I was he, he was actually harvesting about two weeks ago uh, So I was I got to ride in the combine with his dad when he was harvesting uh, and there's some cool videos of that on our Instagram as well uh, but it, it's cool because since we use these these local grains um, we, we were able to keep a really tight control on, our, on the quality of, of the raw materials. Uh, and then since we're so small, we can control the fermentation really well and the distillation process uh, using a batch distillation process. Uh, so there's not as many off flavors in it, so we don't need to over filter our vodka. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of the vodkas today are, are really over filtered and they almost taste uh, kind of like a chemi chemical ethanol instead of like a beverage ethanol. So, so I, I think ours is a true beverage product where we don't have to over filter it. So there's definitely a lot of notes of vanilla, caramel, butterscotch that come through in our vodka that we didn't want to filter out. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of our, our spin on what we, we, the path we tried to go with our vodka. Uh, on our gin, uh, it's definitely, uh, I mean, a standard gin is London dry gin. And we're lucky that, that gin is kind of uh, becoming a new craze in this country as people start to steer away from the London dry and start to experiment with these other kind of uh, contemporary style gins. So ours is definitely more citrus and botanical forward. Uh, there's orange peel, grapefruit peel, uh, lemongrass, and uh, and we also use uh, chamomile and rose for, for kind of our botanical aspects. Mm -hmm. um, so it's definitely lighter, more of a summery drink, like a gin and tonic. Uh, so that's kind of what we were able to do with our gin. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I just love tr trying to figure out the best way to kind of take a, a, a modern day twist on like a traditional made spirit. Uh, so that's kind of where I started so far. Um, and, and bourbon, there's not much, not much you can do on a, on a bourbon. I mean, bourbon's already great. So mm -hmm. uh, I just kind of had to experiment with different kind of mash bills, uh, getting the ratios of the grains right and find the right yeast. Uh, and then sourcing really good barrels was also a priority for us. Um, so that's that's kind of our, our take. Since and since we're so small batch, we're we're hoping to release um, a sing, single barrel uh, bourbons instead of a blended, just so people can actually. It won't be the exact same barrel to barrel, but they'll be able to t taste subtle nuances depending on the seasons of which it was aged. Um, and stuff like that. So that's kind of the, the, our take on, on bourbon so far. Okay. I, I dig all those things yeah. for sure. But I, I noticed on your website, you just brought up about the grain, you know, like 40 miles away. Mm -hmm. um, another thing was like the mash gets used for livestock. Mm -hmm. um, you, you hook that up. And then also too, there's a, there's a statistic I've never seen. Like I've seen, seen the other ones before on some other websites that people tried to do the same thing, but like 0% ethanol. Like, yeah, so we don't use any grain neutral spirits. Okay. So there's some other distilleries and it's and especially big in, in people who make gins because if they just want to focus on making gin, th they might not have the equipment set up to produce their, their vodka, which is what we use as our neutral base for infusing our, 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 our juniper and other herbs, botanicals and spices in our gin. So for them, uh, they're more focused on the infusion process than the creation from scratch. So they, they purchase uh, grain neutral spirits, which comes from like a large manufacturer because their, the economy is of scales. I mean, they can produce it for a tenth of as much as it costs us to make it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there's a lot of people who, who decide to go that route. 
Um, but for us, especially since we already make a great tasting vodka, we, we wouldn't want to purchase somebody else's neutral spirit to infuse our gin with. So that, it's definitely a little bit more costly for us, but we just, we just think it's really important to control every uh, aspect of the process and to, to continue to support local agriculture as well for, for our, our gin. Okay, that's very cool. And and how do you go up about the process of like finding a farmer, you know, to take this mash or to like hey get some grain? Like, what's the process of that? Yeah, it's 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 just do you just like say hey, there's a farm, let's go knock on the door, well, <laughs> something like that. I is mean, it, or is a Craigslist? Nah, like? <laughs> if it came down to it, I probably would have. And yeah. and, I'm, and there's, I mean, you put something on Craigslist and people get it like that. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I I'm I'm just always so optimistic that I'm like, oh, eventually some somebody will like hear of us and they'll be like, hey, I have a friend. Uh, so that's kind of actually what happened is uh, I try to take that route too but yeah. it doesn't really work out that way it seems like if you just like hey, it'll it all work out sometimes it works out sometimes yeah. it doesn't so. yeah so like one, one of our one of our friends his his friend sometimes works on I don't know if it's his cousin or just his friend's family farm uh, out in uh, Marshville or Olive Branch they're kind of between the two cities out towards Monroe so he's like oh hey he grows wheat and I hear that you're looking for wheat uh, so he's like, maybe, maybe he could supply you with wheat. So then I drove down and I visited his farm. So it's a, it's, it's a, fa a small family farm where they grow corn, wheat, and soybeans. Um, they used to, uh, have chickens as well. Um, but now they just do the, the corn, wheat, and soybeans. And then they're actually expanding their farm. So they actually lease some property down there so they can grow a little bit more wheat. So that's, that's how I got hooked up with him. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know how I landed on the guy that takes my mash now. Um, but I, but I, I think I, I reached, oh, I know, I remember where it came from. I, Muddy River Distillery, who is a distillery yeah. out in, in Belmont and makes rum, uh, he had a farmer come in once that, that was asking for this, his spent mash. Uh, because, because, I mean, there's a lot of farmers around here who get their spent grains from breweries. So it's kind of like a, a well-known thing that, hey, people who make alcohol might have something for you to feed to your, your cows and pigs. So I called that guy and he's, he ended up saying no, but... But I have this friend who might want it. And it just so happened that all these people worked in the, in the Charlotte Fire Department, too, which was kind of interesting. <laughs> I guess a lot of them have cows and pigs. Um, it's a retirement. Yeah, plan. yeah, exactly. So, so I, ha I was working with one guy for, for probably a good four months. And then he had, a, he had a lot of pigs. And he actually took his pigs to the slaughter. And then he gave us the sausage. And, then, and I didn't put two and two together. And then a few weeks later, he's like, oh, by the way, I don't need your spent mash anymore. But I have, this, I have another friend. <laughs> Who, who, who wants it and, and now we've been with that guy ever he since he didn't put it together like oh this sauce tastes really yeah. good why doesn't he want my mask yeah exactly <laughs> why would you not want yeah. to feed his lives I didn't understand he took all of his pigs to the slaughter <laughs> <laughs> yeah, normally re you replenish it yeah. you know you know, because you take them all and then you bring them. Uh, my dad was a farmer, so I, I yeah. get the process. Yes, <laughs> but I, yeah, but I think he took him. I think he took a bunch, and then he didn't have as many anymore. Yeah. So it didn't warrant him to come up, and because we 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 gave him gave him about five hundred gallons of it every week. So I mean, and I, I don't know how many pigs that feeds, but it's, it's quite a bit. Yeah, probably, it's got to yeah. got to be a good amount. Um, but the guy we're with now, he's he's awesome. I mean, he's he he's retired, so he has so much free time. He's always on time. If we ever need him, he's like there and and. 20, no, I guess not. 20 so he just minutes, pulls up like with a pickup minutes. truck and you, you load yeah, him up? Yeah, and, he, and we're lucky because we, we don't have a forklift. So we, we, we try and do everything on pallet jacks. So mm -hmm. he actually has a dock high, uh, I, I guess a truck bed, something mm -hmm. that we can actually roll the, oh, the yeah, totes nice. onto, uh, which was a lot better than the, the, the last farmer we worked with where we had a pump into a tote on his truck. So that was a little bit more time consuming and we had to end up cleaning stuff a lot more. Mm -hmm. But now we were able to just, I mean, he comes and it takes 10, 15 minutes and then he, he brings back his totes from last week and it's, it's been a great system, but he, he, he said he's been able to buy a couple more, uh, um, steers. Is that the right word? Male, male, yeah, yeah, uh, cattle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, right. and, uh, but, but but yeah, so he he's and he's he's looking he, now. He's asked me. He's like, oh, can you get me in touch with some br breweries too? And so I've been, reached out to a couple of guys see if they have any spent mm -hmm. grains for him because he's I mean he's all about just trying to get as much as he can because he's re retired so he has time to drive around and pick up free grains from people. Um, but but I'm I'm hoping to get out to his farm here in the next couple of weeks so I can go uh, visit his cattle and he says he has a donkey that my 
two-year-old daughter can ride. So <laughs> I, I guess that'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to balance work uh, yeah. and uh, family. Yeah, she loves animals. So I, I'm hope he said the donkey's nice, but uh, I mean, a nice donkey is like a relative term. So we'll yeah, say. exactly. How nice can a donkey be? I mean, <laughs> he's like, oh, he doesn't kick or bite that much at all, and I'm like, uh. <laughs> I, I, would, I would prefer none. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> zero would be the correct response. Yeah, but no, you just brought up you have kids and stuff like that, and like you know we we tried to get this together, and you know your schedules are very busy. My travel oh, yeah. schedule, but like, how do you balance starting a business like this and with kids? Like you know, that's things like you drop so much money here. Yeah, you just got to be thinking like, gosh, there could be a college account that this could be going into. Yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy. I mean, we need to make sure that we're still uh, putting away savings for for their their college and for our retirement. Uh, but it, I mean, this did take. Are you a were planning for retirement? Oh my gosh! Uh, uh, you're, 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 we're <laughs> of the same age. You th- actually think that <laughs> that's a, a possibility? A, a little anymore? bit. A little <laughs> like, bit, I guess. Um, but but we're. Um, I mean, we did have to, to take a, b- a lot of money out of savings for, for, for this, and we, we have investors as well to get this business started. Um, but yeah, I mean, b- balancing the time for, for, our, for our daughters and family and, and, and work and the distillery, it's definitely very interesting, and we're starting to find that balance a little bit more. Well, how do you um, find that balance? Where, where, where is it? Where is that lie? Uh, it's usually you, you just don't sleep as much, and uh, you just don't... Um, go out anymore <laughs> yeah. basically i said you get down to that six hours yeah. of sleep you yeah. can get everything done yeah and, and 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 i just got a fitbit which tracks my sleep and, and and now my goal is to get seven hours of sleep and i don't think i've gotten seven hours of sleep in the last two weeks that i've had it so yeah. <laughs> so that's uh so that's definitely uh definitely where where a lot of the the time comes from is is, is the sleep um and then it's balancing we're, we're lucky we have some uh my my parents and my wife's parents they they both live in town part time so they help out with the kids and then we just hired a nanny as well uh, because my wife just went back to work she works in NASCAR so she's actually down in Daytona right now oh, uh, okay. I guess they, is it the five hundred beats me <laughs> yeah it'd be the five hundred yes um, what she but, do for NASCAR she does she does sports marketing so she works on uh, for. Her client's Sprint, so she does the a lot of the social media for for oh. Sprint and manages the Miss Sprint Cup girls. Mm-hmm. Um, but but yeah, she's she's been doing that ever since they've they've held the sponsorship. So, so now she's juggling that and this. Like, yeah, she I'm, she, she's yeah. like I work for Sprint, and you know I've got my own distillery. Yeah, and it's, and it's I, you know I got I got I got to figure out the balance of like marketing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. She yeah. is pretty good at marketing then if she's working for Sprint. Yeah, yeah. She she, she I mean. It's definitely we're, we're we're lucky to have each other in this business because I I wouldn't know a thing about marketing and she wouldn't know a thing about making alcohol so mm-hmm. so we kind of stay out of each other's way and I focus on making a great product and she focuses on making sure people know it's a great product uh, so that's been that's been really helpful f- for us yeah well, that, that seems like a good balance yeah. just like meeting her yeah. I had that situation with my girlfriend my girlfriend is the positive one I'm the one that's like no baby don't understand a satellite from the sky might fall and uh, just destroy this house so we have to be very careful yeah, exactly. you know what I'm saying like you know how did you know you, you get luck out in meeting somebody like yeah. that yeah it, it, yeah it, um, yeah Definitely, yeah. <laughs> for sure. I mean, yeah. I this yeah. This distillery wouldn't exist w- without her. That's I mean, that's that's for sure. With, without her, it would just kind of be a hobby. But I, I wouldn't have any way to turn that hobby into an actual business. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. It, and when we were trying to think of things that we could do together, this was kind of like one of the obvious choices because it was, it was it was merging science and engineering, which I love. Um, with kind of the marketing and sales aspect that she's really good at. And I'm also really big into, into food. I mean, I love food. I love drink. Uh, growing, uh, when I was in high school, I was either going to go down like a culinary arts path or into engineering. And I find this is kind of a way where I can combine those two to make one mm-hmm. uh, thing out of it. So uh, hopefully it's eventually my full-time job and I can do it until I retire. Uh, but right now, balancing all all, all parts, family, work, dis- distillery work. Uh, yeah, it's it's time consuming, and it's yeah. and you have to get creative. You have to find babysitters, and you got to find uh, people to help, and figure out ways to do stuff at, at night. A lot of the times, um, do things during your lunch break that I 
wouldn't do, wouldn't normally do like run to Home Depot almost every day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, it's 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 a challenge, but but I think we're we're we found the right balance now. Yeah, absolutely, and you got other people working here. What? Well, well, how oh, large yeah. is it? How, and, how, and that's how? that's probably helped out the most. Yeah. Um, I mean, when we started, it was my wife and I, and I w- I made every drop of alcohol for the first four months. And between my, my job and the distillery, I was working probably 80, 80, around 80 hours a week. I mean, I, I didn't have a day off from December to February. I worked Saturdays, Sundays, holidays, all the way through. I think I took off Christmas. Um, so, so then we were able, we had, we had our second daughter in March. So I was, I was happy I was able to hire Carl, who's our, our distiller. Um, so I got him trained up just in time. So by the time I had, I had uh, our, our second daughter, Bridget, uh, sh- he was able to come in here and operate the qu- equipment by himself. So, so now it's, it's relying on him a lot. So when I'm at work uh, doing chemical engineering, he can be in here producing alcohol, and then I will come in and I'll ch- check on, on different things to make sure everything's running right, make sure we're going the right path with, with, with the flavors, uh, and, and as well as uh, do a lot of research and development on new product coming out. So, mm-hmm. so that's been really helpful. So I'm not going crazy and I get to spend more time with my family. Uh, and then we actually just hired a sales and marketing person uh, to help out Liz because she was trying to talk with bars and restaurants, but that's like a, a full-time thing because they're just as and busy producing, as we are. And, and producing people, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> producing people. Yeah, yeah exactly. That, that, I, supposedly she said it was tiring. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I was kind of unaware. I, I saw her put her feet up and sit down for a while. Uh, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, right. exactly. Um, yeah, but and she, so we hired a sales and marketing person about a month ago, and he's just been awesome you know, getting the word out, talking with the bars and restaurants. Uh, because usually when, when we sit down with a person and let them taste the product and tell them about it, they love it and they want to bring it into their restaurant or yeah, bar. Yeah, because it's alcohol. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Anytime you have a drink, oh, yeah, I like this. Okay. But <laughs> yeah. how is it different than any other one that they would see? Right, you know? yeah. And, 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 and that's those are the things we have to kind of talk with them about and, and go through the process of how it's made and how and how we're, since we're so small, we can leave in these these subtle flavors and we don't have to over over filter it and we can make a different style of gin and stuff like that. Um, so those are the things that we can, we can communicate and, and he can just get the word out there and then he can follow up and make sure they bring it in. Um, so that's that, I mean, he's been doing awesome, uh, definitely around Mecklenburg County and he goes some other, other places in the state, but we definitely want to focus a lot on, on Charlotte for now since, since that's kind of our people and that's who we want to make sure we're serving first and foremost. Yeah, absolutely. You want to be around town. So that way if somebody gets an order, you can go over and there, you don't want to be driving to Kingston, North Carolina <laughs> no. for an order, you know, exactly. like, so it's just important to be around here, but yeah, it's good that you got some people around here. Cause when I talked with like Robbie and Caroline, yes, down at muddy river, like, like it was just those two. Oh, and like yeah. when I showed up to do the interview, like Robbie's like, hold on a minute. And he like ran over, operated a forklift. Oh like, yeah. Hold on a minute. Like, and I was like, do you have anybody else working here? Like, no. and it's just them constantly yeah. nonstop. And yeah. I was like, yeah, we get some volunteers just to <laughs> label bottles. I'm like, it's yeah. just you two, like the whole time. Like, yeah. He, he's funny. He'll, and he'll do that. He's always doing like four things at once. You'll yeah. go, I'll, I, cause he's been really helpful in, in kind of navigating some of the, the oh, steps of get, getting, he's getting super. our distillery open. And, and, and I mean, we, we probably text uh, every couple of weeks about something that's going on. Like, Hey, I have this going on. Like, what's the deal? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, he's, he's been really awesome, but he, he's always doing like 10 things at once running around trying mm-hmm. to run a still at the same time. He's, he's, he's conducting an interview or something like that. Yeah. I, I, he was amazing. Like he, gave me an hour to sit down and talk with him. I was a little impressed that he was able to sit yeah. still considering the five, 15 minutes that I saw before mm-hmm. we ever sat down. So, yeah. but yeah, I mean, and it's great that you guys like work together and stuff like that. And, mm-hmm. and I know that is that pretty welcoming as far as other distillery people I mean, to talk to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're, we're part of the North, Dis- uh, North Carolina distillers association, uh, which is, there's probably about 30 distilleries in the state now. Uh, supposedly they're supposed to be, I've heard any numbers ranging from 50 to 70 by the end of next year, mm-hmm. uh, as far as how many permits are out there yet to be approved. Um, but since it's it's a lot of raising awareness about craft spirits and that we exist and uh, what we're about, um, it's kind of we have to kind of group together to get that message out there because a lot of people. Uh, 
I, th I forget what the number is, but I think it's less than 0.5% of s alcohol sales in the state are craft spirits. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, it's, 90, it's, it's, it's us against the 99.5% of, of the rest of the market. Yeah. Um, so it's not, I mean, in, in a sense, we're, we're, we're competitors because a lot of times the people who want craft spirits, they're going to choose between us. Yeah. But at the same time, it's more about us trying to get everybody. Um, so we definitely, we definitely have to come together and kind of fight, fight the, the, fight the, the big guy. Um, Absolutely. And then you guys still got like this very restrictive government that it's right. very hard to work around. You and know? yeah, and that's the other thing is so as, a, as an association, we're able to kind of come together and have one message. So that's how we were able to get that bill passed for the one bottle per person per year mm -hmm. was we had to hire a lobbyist and, and have like a, a clear direction from the association because having having 10 distilleries with 10 10 similar voices isn't the same as having 30 distillers together saying one thing that we we want to be able to sell bottles from the distillery and then we had to back up the reasons why so they had to bring up cases from uh, other states that, that that changed their laws as well because they were worried that if we sell bottles it, they're losing out on revenue but the truth is if, if they buy bottles from us we're going to start selling more in all abc stores so ever everybody wins and that keeps more money in the state because we're I mean, we buy our grains from the state, and we we we, hire, we have employees that we pay in the state. We're creating jobs, um, so everything is is is. I mean, we're is about trying to help North Carolina. So that's that's something that it, it was definitely hard for uh, us to get our, our our message across. That that's really our our goal is is to help this kind of economy thrive. The same way that happened with craft beer. I mean, they had to fight the same battles. I mean, it's so huge now. People forget where it was about 10 years ago when they were so restricted. Mm -hmm. um, but they just need to go one step at a time. The same way that we have to do is is say, all right, we're gonna we're gonna fight for this, and then after that, we'll see how it works, and then collect data, and then we can say, hey, we did this. Maybe if you helped us go down this path, everybody could benefit. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the, the the phase we're at right, right now. Is we we got the one bottle per person per year, and now we're kind of sitting back and seeing how that benefits everyone, and then we can go back to the state and say, oh, well, maybe if we tweak this aspect, it would really help us out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know one one of the things that the the, the was definitely interesting was the online bottle sales. So, mm -hmm. so uh, all of the distilleries in the state sell, we all sell our products online, but it's illegal for us to, or I guess it's not illegal, but it, it, it's not legal for us to sell our products online and ship out of the state or even in the state. So we all have to use uh, someone from outside the state to do that. So we actually use someone in Washington, DC, so we have to ship our product up to them so that they can put it online and they can sell it all over the country. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when, when we do that, North Carolina doesn't see a dime because they're, we're not working with, within their system. So that, we kind of kind of brought that up with, with some people and said, hey, this is kind of an opportunity where you're missing out on money because you're making it difficult for us and we're pretty much just sending money to a different state. Yeah, like, wouldn't you rather have it available for us to go around here and create more jobs and yeah. all kinds of stuff? You and, know and, then, and then they can even control it yeah, exactly. <laughs> instead of us just shipping it out and then they, they don't they don't get it yeah you control, control as much as one just gives an opportunity yeah. to be in more places <laughs> and be able to sell it here you know like yeah. so that, that's just kind of the, the the things that we're we kind of go through and, and i never knew that starting a distillery i'd get so involved with politics but i guess that's kind of the the nature of the beast where they go hand in hand and in north carolina has such a rich culture and, and distilled spirits rich culture of suppressing people yeah. from making alcohol <laughs> yeah. yeah and people making it illegally and, and then you realize after uh all kind of the 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 taxes we have to pay and all the the hoops we need to jump through to make alcohol and you're like well now i kind of understand why people make it in, in their backyard <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah it's very heavily taxed state. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, but at the same time too like there's like georgia breweries are awful you can't sell beer on location whatsoever yeah i didn't i didn't even know that until a few months ago yeah. i guess it's because the one time well I, I guess i've been to some brew pubs where i guess i guess brew pubs are different in georgia where yeah. Where they can they can if they're mostly food they can serve on site mm -hmm. and then yes. I and then I went to Sweetwater once when I was in college and I guess they had a special event permit yep. and, I, and I didn't realize that and I thought they they're, could do that all the time they're giving away the beer but they're selling the cup is usually yeah how that's it what they did like, it, you, had to pay like, 20, you had to pay twenty bucks to get in but then you got free beer the whole night and I was in college I'm like this is awesome yeah so I thought that was like an every week thing but it, I think it was like they're. I don't know how many year anniversary. Yeah, they're, they're running on the same new. system that I used to do at, at frat parties. You, know what I'm saying? <laughs> you sell them the cup, but you're not selling the beer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is yeah. the you pay thing. for the stamp on your hand, and then you get free drinks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, but you know, but yeah, I think it's more people like 
you get more distilleries and then you have more voices. Mm-hmm. You know, you're obviously going to listen to more business people Absolutely. You know, that want to put more money in. But anyways, um, and what's the future hold? What's what's the next plan? You're you're selling one bottle a year to a person. Like you know, where where what's the outlook on how this place can grow more? I mean, we're we're on board for whatever we get allowed to do. So. If, uh, if, if, the, if they let us start serving cocktails, I'd love to be a, a small craft cocktail bar. Cause I mean, that's, I, I love cocktails too. Mm-hmm. I don't only love drinking alcohol straight. I love seeing what it can be mixed with. Uh, there's there, I mean, it's becoming a huge craze now. There's tons of places where you can get really great cocktails around Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I mean, if that's the direction it goes, that's the direction we'll go. So it's kind of wherever the, the, the laws let us go. Whatever we'll, you we'll legally go. can do, how many we'll, loopholes are available, yeah, we'll, you'll we'll, jump through all We'll those. do it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and so, so besides that, we have a lot of new products that we're going to come out with. So we're going to start making rye whiskey here in the next couple months. Okay. That's, that's one of my favorites. Yeah. So, well. so, so yeah, that's our, another $20 you get from that. So. <laughs> yeah. So our farmer, he doesn't, he doesn't grow rye because, um, rye and wheat are kind of competitive grains. Mm-hmm. So if you, if the, if you, by chance you don't separate the seeds and the and the and the, and the kernels look so similar that it'll, if you accidentally plant plant rye in your wheat and then you, he brings it to a grain mill and it says hey you have 0.1 percent rye in your wheat then they'll reject it and then he has nowhere to go with it mm-hmm. um, so that's why he, he's getting rye from one of his neighbors uh, so they they just harvested that as well so hopefully we'll be getting that in the next couple of weeks and then we'll we'll start making rye whiskey probably for a month and putting away in barrels. Um, so we're pretty excited about that because I, I, I'm with you. I love rye whiskey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it'll be 95% rye, 5% malted barley. So it'll be really heavy on the rye. So you get a lot of that, that peppery notes. Uh, we're going to balance it out with number four char barrel. So our bourbon is number three. So it's, it'll definitely be uh, more, more smoky and spicy on that rye uh, than, than the more, uh, more subtle uh, smokiness and oakiness from, from the bourbon. Um, so that we have, that's, that's the next thing we'll start making. Um, I'm working on an absinthe recipe as well, uh, which hopefully I'll have that out and man, probably, probably not a while because that's a little bit more controlled. I need to send it off to a lab and they need to test yeah. the Billy Joan content, make sure it's below. But there's not a lot of people that are doing that, especially in North Carolina. Like. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a hard thing to make and it's, it's not something you're going to sell a lot of, but I just. I just love making different things, so mm-hmm. we'll, we'll probably put it in smaller bottles, 375 milliliters, uh, because who needs 750 milliliters of 140 proof absinthe? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's that's what I'm I'm working on here, trying to perfect that recipe so we can get it out, um, and that's kind of what's 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 on the. The, the docket for the short term, but, uh, but I definitely want to make lots and lots of different things, uh, as much as they'll let, let us. <laughs> Absolutely. It's, it's always a little difficult to make lots of different products, uh, the way it's structured, but there's, there, there are, uh, there are ways to do it. You have to get special order codes and, and, and that's probably what we'll end up doing for these limited release, uh, type products. Absolutely. All right, now we get to the point of the podcast, the million dollar question. I, I, I talked to you for about 45 minutes to an hour to loosen you know, up just to ask this one question. Right. Um, uh, basically, I sit down with people that have varying degrees of success and different walks of life, and mm-hmm. I mostly want to know about what do you think of when I say the word success? Is it definable? Do you have a clear vision of what it is? Do you think you're down the path of it? Do you think it's even obtainable? Do you know what it is clearly? like, Or yeah. do you feel like you're doing it right now? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if we're there yet, but I, I, I mean, I define success as, as happiness. I think if you're happy in life, then you, you, you're successful. I mean, that's the ultimate goal is just to be happy. So if, 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 if I'm proud of what I'm doing and what I'm making and I'm making people happy by making great products, I, I think that's success in, in my opinion. Uh, so, uh, as a, I just want to keep making things that, that people love, uh, make, make things that I enjoy drinking. Uh, and I think that's, that's kind of, success in my opinion is it a success like the fact that you're you have your own business it's just the fact that yeah i have my own business or is the fact that like uh it's making a little bit of money or i mean what how, how do you define it because you could be losing how many <laughs> thousands of dollars yeah. you know I'm, and you're like oh i'm a sick i feel like i'm a success just because i have this building or is it a situation of like no this could eventually be something that makes right. money and then th- that is a success yeah i mean I'm, money's I'm, i mean you need money for it to be a business. So, I mean, if, it, if the business is constantly losing money, that's not a business, that's really a hobby. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it, you definitely need the business to be self-sustainable to where people, you don't have to constantly be pumping money into it. Um, but, but as long as, I mean, 
having lots of money, that's not the ultimate goal because mm-hmm. I mean, that's as long as this is sustainable, yeah. You know? yeah, as long as it's sustainable, it, 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 it yeah, it sustains it, itself. Uh, it, I keep getting to make great products and, and get to share them with people. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Uh, if I, if I could do this without, uh, having a business and do it out of my home, I'd do it, but I don't think that's exactly legal. So I, no. I can't do that. So exactly. this is, this is the, really the only option for me. <laughs> Absolutely. And well, you're putting in a lot of hours and stuff like that. Is this a situation of like you work so many hours and it's like, I, I feel like a success cause I'm doing my own thing. Or is it a situation like, why do I have to work so many hours, you know, to, to, to get down this path? Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a lot of hours, but it's, it's, I mean, the, the time always flies by when I'm here cause I, I love, doing it. I love, I love working on equipment. I love getting things to run. I love seeing things run correctly. I mean, I think that's the engineer in me. I always see things and I see ways they can be done better. So I love things like efficiency. I love when things work perfectly. Um, so I, I mean, as, as, as far as putting in the hours, I'm never like, Oh man, I can't believe I had to work this much and I haven't paid myself a dime yet. But I mean, it's, it's, it's really, I just enjoy doing it. Um, so did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 which I, usually it's like I always dissect the, the money and the work aspect of it. Yeah. And we've already kind of talked about how you deal with, uh, you know, struggles. You're yeah. a very positive person. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and you have a wonderful person that's uh, looking out for those blind spots. Oh, yeah. That's, so. that, that's us. <laughs> All right. Now you have a live microphone in front of you. Here's the time to let people know about website address, Facebook information, oh, yeah. Instagram. Spill it. Every bit of it. Yeah, so we're our website, docporters.com. Uh, that's the best way to learn about our, our products, and it's also the best way to book tours. So if you book tours online, we do them every, uh, owner-guided tours every Saturday, uh, 4 o'clock and 5.30 right now. So they're about an hour long. We limit it to about 15 to 20 people. Uh, so it's, it's, it's an in-depth look, to, and I, I explain how we make each of our products. At the end of the tour, you're able to sample each of the products we have. So right now it's just vodka and gin. Um, so definitely, that's a, that's a good way to to learn about who we are and and, and each of our products. Uh, but we're also yeah we're also uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter at Doc Porters. Um, Doc Porters plural or just Doc Porter? Doc Porters. Okay, with an S. No S. Apo- no apostrophe. No apo- well obviously you can't have a apostrophe. Yeah. You know, I just want to make sure that it has, there's an S on there. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, but but and and we also have open tasting room hours now. That's something that we it's kind of new. Uh, so Fridays between six and eight, uh, you can just pop in here. Uh, for five dollars, we'll give you a quick tour. It's not in depth, but we'll show you around the facility. Uh, and then after that tour, you also get to sample the products as well. Um, so that's 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 five dollars, six to eight on Friday, and then we also have it from two to seven on Saturday. Uh, so it kind of it overlaps with 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 some of the owner guided tours, but we always have two people here, so somebody can run 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 you back and show you around real quick. All right, if that's everything, I can't thank you enough for yeah, sitting no, here and talking. I'm, I'm glad we got to do this. We kept delaying this a little bit. Most of my schedule. It's probably uh, mostly my schedule. Uh, I was out. Of, I was out of town all last week. I something. was. I was. We were busy. I'm. I'm just glad we got the, this done because I was very excited to sit down and talk to you about this. So thank you very no, much yeah, for taking time no. out of your day. Yeah. Thank you. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Cheers.